So let's get started. Uh, how do you unlock your potential? So we are going to start with uh, how to make a better CV. Uh, so probably you know or you know who I am. Um, I am Praneet. I, this is my actual LinkedIn profile header. So you can get a better understanding. I think we are going to talk separately about LinkedIn anyway. But if you need to contact me, this is one place you can contact. And also you probably know me from this YouTube channel. So there are a lot of content I make can also give it a try and it's free let's talk about how are we going to craft a better cv because it's very important and uh, also something that many people also oversee when it comes to creating a better cv so i'm going to talk about in this session what things you have to be really careful about and also what are important things that you should definitely put on your cv so in this session, I will not talk about these things because they don't really matter. If you really want, you can watch all the videos that I made about this topic. So I will not talk about which template to use because it does not matter. Then I will not talk about which color scheme is better. because That's not also not relevant. Also, I will not talk about which um, tool is to use to create a CV. If you can use Fig, um, Canva, Photoshop, anything it's up to you and i did a extensive video there so take a look i will not talk about anything that's already mentioned because that's not fun many people think uh, different things about what is cv what a cv is but i found something which i wrote nine years ago so as you can see the date is 2015 almost very close to nine years and I mentioned there being very less experienced in the industry uh, I, I, I have written and I will quote many of you think that a CV is a list of your achievements even though oh, there's a typo huh, not seeing after nine years it should contain your achievements it's not as you as I see your CV should be a reflect uh, able to reflect who you are it should be able to represent you, especially when you are not around. That's what it actually do. So the summary is that the reason I mentioned this, people tend to put everything they have done in their entire lives into a piece of paper, which is sad. Also, which, which is not good. So you might think, ah, oh, yeah, it's easy for you to say you are an, a, a software engineering lead in a, I don't know, whatever the company must be easy for you to say that but i was also not that experienced um a few years ago so here is my cv when i was in uni and i don't know why i did that but of course people have to start somewhere and this is where i started i know it looks ugly um i even put my all level results and a bunch of other stuff and as you can see, it has even three pages. Nobody has time to read this. I have no idea what I was doing. And then I re like made this, um, uh, let's say, use a different tool. First, you can see you could see it was uh, made um, using. Oh, do I have a message? Okay, so I get a lot of messages. I will uh, answer them later. Um, I used Word before. Now this was, I think, again Microsoft Word. But I also made a lot of mistakes. You can already see um, the the title, so called the profile description I had. Um, so I will try to read this in much profound voice as possible. Achieve excellence through dedicated work as a dynamic role player in all the phases of software development life cycle in my best ability and. Also, to make myself to a higher morally and a financially stable state. Reading this after nine years makes me puke. Why? It doesn't say anything. Like, what does it even mean? Like, I know because the reason I put this is I've been reviewing CVs for ages now. And I've been doing interviews also for, I think, more than six years. I see this everywhere. People write this profile description as like they are coming from a different world, like very high level. It doesn't give 
anything. So I did the same nine years ago. This is bad. Make it a bit more personal. Okay, I didn't stop there. I went on editing my CV. Um, so this is, I think, still 2014 somewhere when I had a nicer picture to put on my CV. It is not that nice anyway. And this is the other CV I made, which actually got me into Germany. So this CV I published, uh, also applied to different companies. This is still not the best, still not the best. The font sizes, font colors, um, not the, the brightest, but it got me into this company um, that I'm working on as a software engineer, which I'm a software engineering lead now, uh, which is okay. But I, as you can already see, it's very crammed. It's, I have a lot, it has a lot of details and a lot of projects, a lot of, uh, I don't know, extracurricular stuff. Um, I, I put everything I could, but still way better than the previous one. And um, after also writing a very nice cover letter, I got into Germany, um, a German company. And then I also wrote an article about it back in the days. Still, I think uh, seven years before, or is it seven? Six years ago, I wrote a, an article how I made my CV properly and also faced all the interviews. So looking back, after all these years, after all the experience I had, I remade my CV. This is how it looks now. I know this is like one of the more nice pictures I use everywhere. So that's why you see my face there. But I consolidated everything in my 10, 11 years of experience into two pages. So you can see nothing much, very simple. Um, by the way, I'm not saying this is the best CV ever, which is not. Um, this is just to give an idea on how highlight or summarized your CV should be. Um, and some there are many things I learned over, over the years. So I will explain or give some tips on the things that you should pay attention to. Meanwhile, answering all your uh, questions as well. So how did I come from here to here? Let's see. First, there is no, no whatsoever secret formula to make a CV. Many people, even including myself, thought hmm, this is the way to make a CV. And I, I've been explaining to people, I've been writing in, on articles, even in my, my channel. But then I realized, even when I make this presentation, there is no such thing. There is no such formula that I can tell you this is how you should make a CV. So hold your questions. Think what I'm gonna, gonna say um, next. Your CV should represent you, not anyone else, you. So that means what works for me will not work for you. Maybe it will, maybe it, it will not. Who knows, you have to try it but there is no secret formula in making a CV. That's why I mentioned it doesn't matter which template you're using. It does not matter which tool you're using or color palette, whether you have a profile picture on your CV or not, whether you have put, I don't know, whatever, two columns, one columns, it doesn't really matter. There is no such a thing. So you have to represent you. That's why you have to put your own effort into making your CV. I've seen many, many people use a template, which is also not the bad, like worst thing in the world. But as I mentioned, a CV is a representation of you. If you just use a template, maybe you steal it from someone else, or some, maybe you are a friend or whatever, and you keep on editing and insert your details, it's not you. You just write your details on somebody else's personality. And after reviewing or interviewing hundreds of people over the years, um, I, I see that whenever somebody uses a template, I immediately know this is coming from a CV template. So, and I'm pretty sure whomever interviewing you have more inter experience than me will do the same. 
they know if you actually have put some effort into making your CV or not. So please put some effort, spend some time, days, weeks, even a month, make a CV that represent you and not your friend or anyone speaking online or an article or whatnot. So maybe you can ask a freelancer to make a CV, but hmm, again, it's not you. And in that case, many people are also afraid uh, maybe if this CV goes through an ATS, so-called automated uh, ta talent acquisition system or, or CV tracking systems or whatever you call. So whenever you up send a CV to someone, a co uh, the companies usually put this into a, um, the system and they get a score, right? So then people would like to have a higher score as much as possible so you will get shortlisted, right? That's why you should have a proper CV. <sighs> However, also when I take a look back and step back and think, it doesn't really matter, right? If you are applying for a position or job or a company or whatnot, which puts your CV into one of these systems and get a score to evaluate you. And only on that score, they are going to reject you Trust me, you are better off from that company. Which means two things. One, maybe you don't really have enough skills. Then you probably should um, like up your game. Second thing, that position has hundreds and thousands of applicants. So that's why I mentioned, maybe you don't, you are not really qualified. I mean, maybe you don't have the edge to take up this position. And... Um, this company don't really care who, like applying. They don't have the enough decency to go through the CV and then evaluate personally because uh, I don't know. I've been working with all these systems as well. No system in this world yet can evaluate a CV as a human do. No, nothing. All the AI and whatever thing, nothing can do that. So if you want to make your CV to get a better score at whatever the online tools or the system, go, go for it, no problem. But then you are losing your personality out of the CV. So this is just my personal opinion. So don't take it 100% um, as the truth. Take it with a grain of salt. My, my opinion is that it shouldn't really matter. Of course, it doesn't mean that you go bonkers and then make a really ugly CV that also doesn't mean that but pay attention to the details and to represent yourself but not to get a higher score because that doesn't really make sense at the end so spend time make your CV as if it's your it's as if it's you and I know there are many people in this world who has this um, thing called um, OCD so obsessive compulsive disorder who can see even the tiniest changes in alignments, misalignments and whatnot. Even who, the people who don't have this OCD can detect these kind of things. Don't do this. This is horrible. Please, please align your CV. Like, Just spend some time. Give it to your friend and ask, hey, do you see some problems with this one? I don't know why people think this is not a big problem, but it is, trust me, it annoys me a lot. I know for sure there are a lot of other CV reviewers in my company and whomever I've worked with so far still find this a problem. Align your content, please. Maybe the worst thing, I've seen this, like people applying for UI UX designer roles, web designer roles, web developers still have this issue. How do you call yourself creative or attention to detail in your CV itself, which looks like this? It looks horrible. Same. Why, why people do this? So the, sec, the, this tip, the third tip that I have to give you is, please put your alignments, like get your alignments correct. It annoys the person who's reviewing your CV and also it gives less value to your personality because it 
it looks that you don't really put enough effort into making your CV, which is not really good when you apply for something. So, please make your alignments properly. Then, this is also a very inform, like important um, topic. What to put and what not to put. My take here is don't put anything that's not relevant to this job that you're applying. Remove any sensitive data that you have. So what are sensitive data and what are irrelevant data? So these are the things that you should not ideally put in a, in a CV or in that matter anywhere. But you know, we live in a digital world, so of course so it's very hard to hide your information anyway. But at least try to hide it from a, a CV that you are applying for thousands and thousands of companies, which also they share the CVs across companies. So many people will know your information. Full name, nobody cares. You are whatever Arachige and whatnot, nobody cares. And also you should not give this information because this is a sensitive information. Anybody knows your full in data can derive your I don't know, passport information or your bank accounts, anything. So don't do this. Put your normal, you know, um, familiar name, we call it. So the name that people call you, not the full entire thing with, you know, five or six names. Address, also don't do that because again, sensitive information, but if you really, really need to tell where you live, I don't know, maybe in Columbus 7 or whatever, just put the city name, then people know where you are located and it's easy if you're applying for a remote job or to calculate the commute, whether you have to travel for work or anything, but don't put the full address. It's not really good. Date of birth, nobody cares. I also used to think this is important at least to put the age, but in this current, um, uh, I don't know, uh, hiring uh, world, people should not put their date of birth because this is also used for many of the verifications, at least here. Uh, people ask your name and your date of birth and also address, uh, and then they can actually steal a lot of information from you. So please don't share this. And if you think hmm, maybe it's important that they should know I am whatever the age, hmm, that then you're probably not applying for a good job. Uh, the age should not really matter. So don't bother putting date of birth or age. But of course, this is up to you. This is just my recommendation and you can do uh, as you please. Uh, again, NIC or passport number. Um, I mean, if you have an NIC, I've seen people adding the your national identity card number. I don't know why they do that, but some people do. So my recommendation is don't. Um, this is also important. You probably will also add personal referees, like people who vouch for you in your CV. Don't add their personal addresses. Sometimes you can add their work addresses because in case they want to really post, but I don't think anybody really cares at this age, right? I mean, everybody sends emails and maybe even give a phone call, but not really a postcard. So I don't think it's important to add uh, the addresses anyway. A photo is totally up to you. If you want to add your photo, you can. Um, if you don't, it's also fine. I see it's good to add a photo, in my opinion, because then it kind of creates a, an impression, like first impression. When I look at a CV, if I see a person's face, it helps me to connect with the person, um, connect with the person better. But if you don't think that you don't have good photos, it's also fine, just don't put it at all. Uh, but even when you put photos, please don't post whatever you're posting on Instagram. Is not a CV is not your social media. Put a professional photo that people can really recognize who you are. Not nothing with you know doing these things. So a professional photo, yeah. And then uh, irrelevant data, as I mentioned, age not really important. Um, Unless you are, I don't know, 60, then you only have five years to work. I think at least in Germany, that's the retiring age. Otherwise, it mm, doesn't make sense. Also, maybe mm, if you are, how to say, younger than 18, which is also not, I think, legal to work. Anyway, it depends on the country. But my point is, it doesn't matter. If you go for a job and they want to know your age, uh, which is also not good. And there are also, depending on the, uh, the country, there are also different uh, regulations that what you should or should not put. And also what the, the companies can ask 
or cannot ask from a, um, uh, from an employee. For example, in Germany, if not explicitly mentioned, we cannot ask a gender of a person. In uh, you know all the, uh, the all um, multi gender thing going on in the world, so that's there. And there is one important thing as well: if you are a female and if you are applying for a job, the employer cannot ask if you are married or if you are pregnant. I don't. I'm not. I'm probably not sure. I'm, I don't think that you will put that you are pregnant in your CV, but it, they cannot ask. So my whole point is: do not put information that you don't want to share. They cannot ask this information. So you should not also give as well. And of course, this also depends on the country, right? So um, again, because you should not really put whether you are married or not, because this is not a proposal marriage, right? So it's not relevant. And the fifth point I want to talk is every word that you put in your CV counts. Imagine that you have to pay one dollar for every word that you put in your CV. So you have to maximize your value that you are getting out of the words that you put, but also minimize the cost that you have to pay. This is called a traditional knapsack problem. If you want to know, um, or if you are into algorithms, it's a knapsack problem, dynamic programming. Um, why, why do I mean this? Remove any of the unnecessary words. Do not let this person who's reviewing your CV get bored because we review a lot of CVs per day and it's very boring if people has like SS of what they did nobody cares I will tell, tell this um, tell this phrase a lot nobody cares because it's true nobody really cares about what we do unless that's really really important so that will be the motto of this session actually nobody really cares but how how can I make them care so whatever we put in our CVs has to be really good and they will stop for a while and then really read it because in average people will only spend maximum maybe one minute to read your CV when they actually screen in the screening call at least. If you get an interview maybe they will look a bit more but a CV reviewer or a, I say during the screening process one will only spend one minute or maximum two minutes to read your CV because we get a lot of CVs to review and we don't have all the time in our world. And also we have a full time job, so we have to do that as well. So we can't really see the reviews the entire day. So make every word count. And one thing to do is always ask yourself, do I really, really need to add this in my CV? So for example, including myself, all of the results. Do, do you really need that? Uh, you were a prefect in your school. Uh, you were, I don't know, whatever. And you also, yeah. And you won the eighth grade dancing competition. You write clean code, which is also expected from a software engineer anyway. You know how to work with Jira or I don't know, whatever other tool. You know Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio, which is also somewhat a necessary thing when you write code and also problem solving problem solving skills hmm I will also talk about the soft skills so cool uh, later on and also you did code reviews which is also expected from a software engineer anyway see the thing is nobody cares so this is a nice meme I also created a few years ago I don't know if you know memes but these are like the old memes nobody cares meme um, you have 10 is in your O level, hmm, it's not really important. Um, and also, if this is your only qualification, maybe that's important. But then we have a different problem to solve. If you your highest achievement is actually ten years in O level, which is not also a hard exam to do anyway. So, what things we should ideally put then? Uh, let's start with the negative stuff. So, um, maybe you do a lot of projects. Please don't mention everything because it's not important. I know I've seen people also put the group projects they do in the university, which is also it's fine because maybe during your studies, you don't have a lot of time to work on different projects or personal projects. Maybe it's fine. You can add your projects you do 
at the university or whatever the um, education institute you are studying it's okay but please don't put all, all the project you ever did this is one thing one mistake i also did i made a three page cv because i thought it's cool to put all the projects i do and I, which i did like i don't know what tens of projects when i was in uni but it's not relevant the simple script you write to scrape web and send an alert to i don't know discord no it's not really it's not um, how to say really a, a good project so try to focus on the good projects you do if you don't have projects it's fine then mention what you have but try not to overwhelm the cv with everything you did so as i mentioned ask yourself do you really need to put this in your cv and don't write paragraphs and paragraphs about your project because people should i mean people don't have time to read all the stuff that you put on your cv anyway and uh, just try to highlight it and maybe you, if you cannot highlight your what your project do or what your project does in maybe one or two sentences you are not really good in you know communication skills so probably spend more time and ask people and rewrite your project descriptions in a very simple way that anybody can understand and also uh, your cool project if you write like i don't know 10 lines nobody will read anyway what's important is that you add the tech technology or technologies you used for the project and your responsibilities i will also explain this in uh, the to do section as i mentioned nobody cares um just put a summary of what it does um so for example let's say that you did uh, a post system or point of sale system for um, a grocery um, uh, shop and everybody in this world i at least i hope whomever in the software engineering industry knows what a post system is you don't have to explain what a point of sales system is or an inventory management system is everybody knows that you don't have to explain and highlight the tech only the tech stack or the technologies you did and especially your contribution what did you do maybe it's a huge system but of course we know you don't have all the time in the world to write everything in this system so explain your contributions and this is also also important also i am guilty of this one when i was in uni do not put all the technologies you ever tried i know some people for a small project you write a python script or maybe javascript and you put in the cv i'm good with javascript mm, maybe you are not because the cv is not a place where you show off but rather show your skills so trying a technology does not make you an expert if you at least did maybe have done one project it's okay but just trying a technology for one time and writing a script or a small program does not make you an expert and why i am saying this is let's say that you apply for a, a java position and you have tried java for a week for a university project and you apply for this position and you get an interview and i look at the cv ha huh, this person knows java so let me ask a java question and you are done because you don't know how to answer and then you will fail the interview is such a waste of your time and also the interviewer's time don't do that and they will hate you for it and you will never get any of the interviews from the same company again so you are also damaging yourself rather than actually you're trying to impress other people so don't do that um so yeah that's the question that i also want everybody to ask do you really know it or you know about it so do you really know java or you know about java so just think about it and then maybe it's a good self reflection how would you rate yourself in a different set of skills as well and i've also seen uh, many people also do that they put i don't know bar charts percentages about the skills they have i've seen this many times because mostly because they are in the very famous cv uh, templates so what do you mean by you know 95% of react js i don't know what it means maybe you do so i would really like people to rate themselves as they as they see themselves not in 95 what is then 100% of javascript like 
you wrote JavaScript library itself, uh, so ReactJS itself? Mm, I don't think so. I, I would mostly recommend to go in a direction where you rate yourself in these levels, like we call it the Likert scale. So you think you are a beginner, you think you are an intermediate, or you are in the advanced level. So not the advanced level like A-levels, but in the level of being ad an advanced in this particular technology. So if you think you are, you only tried Java for one week, maybe you are a beginner. Maybe you are intermediate if you did actually a project or you know how to work around this technology. You are advanced, maybe you can mem you memorize all the functions and you know, class names um, in this particular framework. So don't put ratings in your skills. It's very, it's, it sounds very childish, you know. And very, very important things. Please um, learn the difference between certificates and certifications. These are two different things. Udemy courses are not certifications. These are certification certificates which nobody really cares. Why do I say that? I've seen many people put all the certif certificates on Udemy or Skillshare or Coursera. They put them in their CV. But it's no, they are not recognized anywhere. Anybody can do a Udemy course. You just play the course and then do nothing. Or you just watch it all over again and you will still learn nothing. It's not really important. You have to do stuff to learn things. And that's where you will put this particular skill in your CV using projects that you did. And also as an expertise you have. Not using Udemy courses. And just imagine... I also, let's say, did a JavaScript course. Mm, it doesn't say anything. Anybody can watch courses. So, and also, it's also very important how you word it. If you put Udemy certificates as certifications in your CV, I immediately think you are not good enough because you don't know the difference between certificates and certification. What are then certifications? Certifications are given by a professionally well-recognized entity to assess your skills using a certain process. So what are the examples? So for instance, uh, for technology, at least I know, um, AWS uh, cloud engineer or de de cl cloud practitioner, the also Google data engineer. So they have a curriculum. You have to study for it. You have to ha do some certain projects to do that. And you have to write an exam to get the certification and then you have to get really high marks. Have to pass the exam with really high marks to get the certification. And you will get a so-called, we call them a credential, which is your unique token, also using uh, blockchain technology that nobody can change this. So once you get a certification, you get it like forever, not forever, but you truly get it. So that's the difference. If you follow a Udemy course and it has a quiz at the end and you pass it, it doesn't mean anything. So don't waste space on your CV by putting this one. If you really want to mention that you know a certain technology, put it in your skills, not as a certification. And don't write generic descriptions for anything. So I've seen uh, the profile section, as I mentioned, people just say, I really want to improve my skills and contribute into my maximum capability to the company goals, which is ideally what an employee do. I don't know why people do that. And also, uh, where in during your whatever the job disc, um, positions or maybe even volunteering into this kind of um, events, you put very general uh, things like, I help to organize events. Meh. I mean, it's good, but everybody can do that. So you have to mention why you are special. What did you do special? What did you do that other people didn't do? So that's where you stand out. As I mentioned, CV is a portrait of you and you, you only. So you have to mention in a, like a special way um, that uh, it gives recognition for you and not in a very generic way. Uh, so one example I've seen many times like over the years is People mention in, in their developer roles, they wrote clean code and reviewed, reviewed other people's code. Hmm. 
which is actually part of their jobs anyway you have to write clean code otherwise you will, you will get you know fired and you have to review other people's code that's how teams work like you know development teams work that's an expectation what did you do special maybe you wrote some guidelines to review code maybe you implemented a framework where people can evaluate if they are writing clean code or not these are the special things not writing clean code because it's as if that you are applying for i don't know uh, um, olympics in a 100 meters sprint and you mention in the qualification that uh, you can run of course everybody can run and is you are applying for an essay competition and you mentioned that you know the alphabet doesn't make sense so um mention what's special about you not the boring stuff and uh, this is also one thing that i've seen um in different terms some people say they work closely with team members or some people say i'm a team player uh, yes when you work in a company when you work in a team you have to be a team player otherwise you can't really work well so then you have to know how to word this maybe you did something for the team then maybe you implemented certain frameworks or i don't know processes that to help increase the team engagement that can be a case so mention these kind of things not the generic stuff what do you need to add add your linkedin profile which we also will talk in a while add the link to the linkedin profile github profile link i don't know i think people should know in this call what github is and it's also very important to showcase uh, who you really are in my, in terms of your developer skills you can say that you know xyz technologies but if you have never done any project while you you know, have free time then that's a different problem people will think you just don't really want to learn anything but of course not everybody wants to do this so it's fine if you don't have a github repo or github profile it's okay but i highly highly recommend for anyone following a software engineering or computer science or even data science any type of this kind of technical um, courses or de degree programs please create a github profile and write whatever the small scripts you write daily like could be an automate something or um, create csv files or whatever put uh, those code in your github profile and then everybody can see what type of code you actually write you know the coding standards and so on that will be really helpful and if you have a blog please put the link as well if you don't have a blog that's sad because i think this world runs in uh, when people actually share their knowledge if people don't want to share their knowledge nobody will improve nobody will learn anything so everything that you see on the internet there are some sort of knowledge sharing uh, documentation could be libraries and whatever everything is out there because some person down in a corner of a room or a bay in the in a basement thought hmm you know what i should share this with the other people so they can also learn so if i see that someone has a blog it immediately improves my impression on them because i know for sure this person likes to share their knowledge and it will be a good opportunity for me to hire this person because i know they will really work in a team share the knowledge work with people because that shows their passion so if you have a blog put the link and it doesn't really matter if it's medium wordpress or blogger doesn't really matter you have write something anywhere even on a piece of paper no not on a piece of paper if you don't have a blog i highly recommend you starting one write whatever you have on your mind it's a good way of expressing yourself if you are active on stack overflow put the link as well i know many people use stack overflow just to read the answers or maybe once in a while to ask some questions but you know what there is a different superpower when you get when you actually answer questions it's not that hard just send, spend like maybe one hour there and then try to answer very basic questions you will still get a lot of motivation out of that so if you have a stack overflow profile also put that if you don't that's sad 
and um, mention your career related achievements and milestones maybe you as as i mentioned before you got a certification or you won some awards or you went to a hackathon and then won something even participation for these kind of hackathons at least at your age i hope these are mostly undergraduates still important than doing nothing and your interest related to your career it's fine as i mentioned it should be your personal portrait when you are not around but when you apply for a software engineering job you are you know a, you like to like to do hip hop dancing probably that doesn't really add any value so goes back to the previous point i mentioned be careful when you add something to your cv and ask yourself do i really really need to put this in my cv and will it add value to my profile if not just don't add it and please make it really concise don't write essays nobody has time to read this on point be on point this is what i tell many people as well this is also different personalities i am someone who likes to go in like go on point when i talk with people i write an email or i go on zoom calls or whatever because i want things to be on point because i don't have time to like spend hours and hours reading things same goes for a cv i when i see someone explain their experience like i don't know like paragraphs and paragraphs i immediately think this person don't have enough skills to explain what they do in very simple terms this is just me as i mentioned this is my personal perspective might be wrong uh, but so I'll take it with a grain of salt again uh, but i hope that uh, it actually helps then let's talk about soft skills what type of soft skills that people should in cvs what are actually soft skills hmm <clears throat> this is very tricky because i've seen people add a lot of soft skills in their cvs which are not even relevant and not even they don't even make sense such as problem solving and critical things <clears throat> i always ask people why do you put this in your cv how do you prove that you have problem solving and critical thinking and how how can i evaluate just by looking at your cv because anybody can put that i mean anyone can say that they are good at sol- problem solving i need proof prove me that you are good at problem solving and critical thinking how maybe you have a stack overflow account where you answer people's questions maybe tough questions and you solve them maybe you have projects that you try to solve a problem in this world or maybe tackled one of the hardest technical problems it can even be a simple one like I, as i mentioned pos system then i know that you can actually solve problems putting this in a cv doesn't make sense because it doesn't say anything maybe you put playing chess playing games in your interest maybe it gives a little bit of weight but still putting problem solving and critical thinking in your cv doesn't make any sense because i don't know you and i can evaluate these things in an interview right then why do you even put this in a cv teamwork and collaboration because it's expected from a person anyway you can't go to a company or maybe even you start your own company and work alone that doesn't work because at some point you have to talk to people so putting teamwork and collaboration in a cv doesn't add any value because you can't prove it on a cv maybe if you add projects like group projects in your project section in a cv and you mention that you were a group leader or maybe you were playing this part in a group project that you had this t- type of responsibilities then i know ah okay this person person actually can do teamwork they know how to collaborate but putting this as a soft skill doesn't really say anything and communication skills ah <sighs> i don't know this is very overrated people say that they are good at uh, communication skills but this they still cannot summarize one of the projects they did in a simple terms tough luck because communication skills are also measured when you actually talk to a person and reading their you know their work if i see the cv and they put communication skills 
as a skill, that's actually a red flag for me because it means they really want to highlight something that they are not good at. If they are really good at communication skills, their CV would be precise, on point, and if they have a, an email uh, as a cover letter or anything, it will be also crisp. No, you know, boasting and so on, on point. And also, if I go into an interview with this person, I would immediately know if this person actually has the so-called proclaimed communication skills. So adding this in a CV doesn't really make sense. Adaptability. Adaptability yeah, it means that you can you know, adapt to new technologies or a new processes and whatnot, which you actually have to do. Otherwise, you will lose your job because in at least uh, in the technology world, software engineering world, not necessarily programming, but anything, business analyst, QA or anyone, you have to be able to adapt to new things. Otherwise, you will lose your job. So putting this, as I mentioned, is this actually a, a requirement you're putting in a CV, actually, you're wasting space. Perform well under pressure. I don't know um, why. Uh, I don't know. This is, this is a different problem. Uh, I don't know who actually performs well under pressure. Uh, maybe you have a better, I don't know, pressure or stress management uh, skills. Then that can be a soft skill. I don't know. But who wants people that performs well under pressure? I don't know. Pressure is, I, I always call like, everybody should have some sort of pressure. It, it ideally should be positive pressure that we thrive. It makes us do good things. It makes us do better. But performing under pressure means that you are putting in a very bad situation. Whatever the companies do, I will still do it. Don't worry. You don't pay me. It's fine. I will still do it. You want, um, you tell me a project that needs to be delivered tomorrow. Don't worry. I will stay overnight and do it. No, we don't. We need people like that. I know when I say we don't need people like that, I'm talking about these um, European countries at least. I used to work in Sri Lanka, which had a different, let's say, expectations from companies uh, towards the employees, which is also sad. However, I don't think this adds any value. Rather, on the contrary, it gives a negative impression on you that you are fine working under pressure. But if you have constant pressure from a company, probably you are working in a wrong company. Creativity. Again, we can't measure. And you, can, you uh, say creative and your CV says otherwise. You have misalignments. You don't know pres uh, how to present yourself. Mm, tough luck. Active listening. Oh, God. I don't know why people even try. And you might think that I came up with this kind of thing. No, there are people actually living in this world who put this stuff in their CVs. That's why I, these are not like random words I found. These are the things actually I've seen on CVs. Decision making. Yeah, right. Uh, but I think you get the point. Leadership. Same thing. What does it even mean? You have to prove yourself. Put it from your experience, maybe the people who actually participated here, maybe organized this event, they actually have these kind of skills. Otherwise, I mean, we can't do it, right? So they can give examples on how they led a team to do a project, how they made decisions on this kind of uh, volunteering or any kind of projects they do. That's a good opportunity. That's why I also encourage people to do volunteering because it also makes you happy. But also, it gives a lot of skills that we will talk in the other session uh, in, the, in a few minutes that a normal job or studies or any degree cannot give you. So these are important, but I don't think um, uh, they worth they are worth mentioning in a CV. I don't know because it doesn't make sense, at least for me. But if you um, uh, disagree. Feel free to drop a message in the Zoom saying what, your, what are your thoughts. I would also like to hear. Then, finally, please get your CV reviewed. Why? Because you might think you have the best ever CV in the world, but it's not. It's, it's called the creator's biasness. 
which means when you create something you are biased in two extremes either you think it's not good when actually it is good and the other way around you build something you think it's really really good but it's actually not one example is maybe you are you draw like as a painter or an artist when you draw something because you've been drawing it for so long you think it's bad but when you actually show it to someone you will definitely realize no it's actually good when you hear people's feedback you know it's good and the other way around as well people think they are doing a good job but maybe actually it's not so it's always always advised to get feedback from your friends your family or anyone that uh, has some experience in this uh, domain so if you have a cv you create one don't go straight and apply for companies ask your friends or your lecturers or anyone we have a platform in our discord server a little bit of personal marketing here if you like why like to join post your cv and people there is a community they will review your cv so in case you are interested so these are my tips so all the resources i mentioned are actually in here i guess i will share these slides later so everybody can take a look at it but these are some important things also from me uh, that i found maybe if i find some other uh, links i will also share it in summary to reiterate what i said a cv should be a reflection of your profile not someone else's not even mine so don't look at my cv and then say hey um i think i should make a cv like pranit no don't do that be your own have your own uh, cv and then don't be afraid to show creativity but make sure that you are um you you present yourself nicely so at least uh, this is uh, for the tips that i can give making a cv i know it's not the most descriptive uh, informative session you might have thought but i think these are very important if you really want to nail your cv and get an opportunity so that's it for this part i think i actually over went a little bit overboard but there you go